This is a quick video over eutectic ternary charts. And this is for when you have a uh, liquid that solidifies to a solid. So let's say we have a liquid at 1200, 1200 degrees Celsius liquid, and it is, oh, 10% A, 10% A, 10% B, and of course it will be 80% C. So on our chart it would be right there. So now we have this chart, and what do these points actually represent? Well this point represents the melting point of pure C. So anything under this on this line is will be a solid. Anything above it with pure C will be a liquid. So this is the melting point. Let's say the melting point of C is maybe, oh, let's say maybe, let's, let's just say 1150. That's the melting point of C, and maybe just 1100 for A, and the melting point of pure B, pure B is maybe 1200, or let's just say 1050 degrees Celsius. So we have a liquid that is 10% A, 10% B, and 10 and 80% C. Where is that on the chart? Well, on the bottom it's maybe maybe somewhere right there. Somewhere. So then we have to go up to 1200 and let's say this is 1200. So let's say we start to cool it. What's going to happen? So if we start start to cool it at this composition, C will begin to solidify. So so we have a liquid, and it's not going to have waves like that. It'll probably be very viscous. But we have some liquid, and C begins to solidify. So we get little solid particles of C. But as it solidifies, the liquid component decreases in the amount of C. And it decreases um, with uh, keeping A and B in proportion. So if so if 10% of the uh, solution is A and 10% is B and it had no C, then it would be 50-50, so 50% A and 50% B. So there's actually a line, a line right there for our system, where as C solidifies, it's going to go down this line. I'm trying to, so it's going to go down this line. That's actually kind of difficult to draw. What's going to go down this line? And as it solidifies, it changes the temperature at which C solidifies or crystallizes at. So now you have to decrease the temperature even more. And then you're maybe here. And then you have to decrease the temperature even more. And then you get here. And more. And again, more of C is crystallizing. And you just keep on going. And then you have to keep decreasing the temperature until you get until you get to this point right there at this point this is a binary eutectic that means a and c begin to crystallize crystallize so now we have to do, do the same thing for a a um oh what color is a is blue so then Maybe, let's say we're at this point, maybe. So then, now A is crystallizing, so it's wanting to change the composition to go that way, but C is crystallizing, and it's wanting to change the composition that way, so they could both increase the composition of the liquid of B. So now A is crystallizing, and the liquid composition of B increases. A B. Now, notice we don't know the composition of the crystals yet. Right here, right here, before we get to this point where A starts crystallizing, we know it's completely C. But we can figure it out, but right now we're just going to focus in on the fluid, or the liquid. So now you have to decrease the temperature more, and then C crystallizes more, and A crystallizes more. So we keep going down until we hit this point. This is a ternary eutectic. That means they all crystallize. 
So now B starts crystallizing. And it will continue, it will stay at that, te that temperature until it's a complete solid, until all the liquid has crystallized. Because remember, it has no reason to change composition because that's the only point where you have A, C, and B where they all um, crystallize. So they're just going to stay there because the liquid composition isn't going to change anymore. So you can kind of think of that as like an azeotrope for if you're doing distillation or something where it's not where you can try putting in more heat, it's not going to change the composition. So really, if we wanted to, we could get to that point, keep it at that temperature, uh, decant the liquid, and then we may have purified it if you didn't want C in your, in your, uh, your liquid. Or we could do it again if we had the composition where it was right there or down there. So all this chart is is just is that you follow this. These lines represent different temperatures or the isotherms. So this may represent that line may represent actually let's do this. This line may represent nine fifty. This one eight fifty and I'm just completely making up numbers and this line may represent oh seven eight eight hundred eight hundred whoops eight hundred and then the final temperature may be seven fifty and only at seven fifty can you have a b and c crystallize all together you can have B and C crystallize on this line. That's the uh, binary eutectic for A and for B and C, and you can have B and A crystallize together on this line without affecting C. So that is the absolute basics. The next video will have actually how you do some calculations off of the chart, but this is the basics of the um, ternary eutectic chart. And remember, the this increases. That's just the temperature. And if you're above all these, so if you're in this face, above the diagrams, if you're above all this, so if you're all in this area, above this, above these curves, it's a liquid. Below these, you get solids. Solids. So that is the uh, binary eutectic chart.